Everybody's a suspect! Coming to get you, Bobber. Hi guys, welcome back to my new segment called The Movie Corner. I did say that I'm going to bring on some guests every now and again, and my very first guest is Rob from uh, The Movie Vault. How you doing, Rob? Um, Rob is a, a massive uh, physical media collector, and he's also a big fan of John Carpenter as well, as he's probably told you a few times. Um, <laughs> so what we're going to do is we might obviously change the subject now and again, but our, our main focus today is we're going to talk about John Carpenter because obviously I'm a big horror fan. Rob is a big John Carpenter fan as well. So we've got that in common. Uh, and obviously John Carpenter through the years has made a lot of great movies. So we'll, we'll talk about John Carpenter a little bit, talk about his movies and just have a general chit chat. Cool. Thanks for having me, Barry. Yeah, not a problem, Rob. Um, so again, we'll start off with John Carpenter. We might sway away from John Carpenter, but um, what's your favorite John Carpenter movie, first of all? Oh, that's that's kind of a hard one, Barry, because I know, like yourself, I'm a big Halloween fan. So mm. I think Halloween is probably when I first became aware of Carpenter. Uh, but I probably have to go with the thing. I don't think you can 80s horror, yeah. practical effects. That's that's right up there, like number one. Yeah, I mean, it's hard for me as well because I love Halloween. Halloween is my favorite yeah. horror movie, but it's very close though. The Thing yes. is my second favorite um, John Carpenter movie. But if, see if you if you remove all his horror stuff, which is not a lot, um, mm -hmm. I'll pull out the first film here, right? <laughs> Go for my, it. Fa my favorite non yes horror film it's got to be big trouble in little china that's actually one of my favorite movies of all time as well big trouble yeah. in little china I, I, I take it you've seen big trouble in little china oh absolutely yeah i i would probably say um that's probably one of the first carpenter movies i saw mm -hmm. thinking back to when i was uh, a lot younger and probably wasn't like i i don't kind of remember being a kid like being um really aware of directors i just liked kind of certain movies and um, big trouble was definitely one of them like absolutely you know you said it already barry big fan of john carpenter funny line i kind of say all the time <laughs> on the channel but as big as a john carpenter fan i am i love court russell as well i oh, just yeah. done like a five day court russell marathon yeah, kind yeah. of thing over on the channel where i tried to watch a couple of Kurt Russell movies I hadn't seen and kind of ones I had so um, yeah oh, Big Trouble awesome what a great cast as well in there like Kurt Russell and um, Kim Cattrall isn't it as well it's like really, yeah. really awesome yeah fantastic I, stuff yeah I think jo uh, Jack Burton as well he must have some of the most quotable lines of all time <laughs> in Big Trouble in Little China I usually get maybe one or two quotes in a movie but Big Trouble in Little China I think almost everything that he says you can quote because it's so funny so memorable yeah. and Go back to John Carpenter though. When I first saw Big Trouble mm -hmm. in Little China, I didn't know who John Carpenter was when I first yeah. seen the movie. Um, and then when I found out who John Carpenter was and I started to watch his movies like Halloween and The Thing, Christine and stuff, I still mm -hmm. never thought who directed Big Trouble in Little China because back then yeah. I didn't really care for who, who it was. And then when I found out it was John Carpenter, I'm like, it's bizarre, but at the same time, it's understandable, you know, because he's mm. got Kurt Russell in the movie as well. And I'm just like, it blew my mind when I found out that it was John Carpenter. I found out years ago, but at the same time, yeah. I'm just like, wow, that just like a great director and a great movie. And I just love, I love this movie. Yeah, it's awesome. And as you said, like, you know, I think a lot of like um, people who maybe aren't as, as into Carpenter as we are, you would probably mostly associate him with horror stuff. So it's kind of it's it's not an obvious kind of one. If you if you aren't aware of stuff he's directed, it's not like you wouldn't immediately think it. But yeah, of course, there, there's some great lines in there, isn't there? Well, I love the one where isn't it like um, if I'm not back in an hour, call the president. And like, <laughs> call like the president that. for what? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that, but, but that cracks every yeah. things that. It sounds like they're not supposed to be funny. It's just hilarious yeah. the way he does it. It's, it's his face as well. He just wants to slap his face. It's brilliant. Yeah. Even, like, <laughs> even, brilliant. even the, the small things that he does when he shoots the ceiling and the the, yeah. <laughs> the thing just falls on top of his head. He just like yeah. it's, it's so funny. And he, he's like knocked out for the whole fight and then he wakes up <laughs> and it's like everything's over. Like, I'm ready, it's over. <laughs> brilliant. That's so good. And in the what do you call it? In the in the elevator as well, when they're all standing there. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah we can that. do it. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Even at the and start. It, yeah. Sorry, go on. Yeah. I was just going to even at the start when he's, when he's with the, the bottle and it flips yeah. and he catches it. It just lets <laughs> all in the reflexes. <laughs> yeah. <so> <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course, was the man. Yeah. It's awesome. And, you know, of course, they 
they ended up doing like it wasn't it four or five movies together, John and Court. Like so, um, yeah, fantastic stuff. The thing, obviously, we already talked, we already kind of mentioned it there. But um, another one, um, I, it was actually a recent watch for me. Burn me one second because I didn't, yeah, I didn't take it out, and it's right here. Is it one of the escapes? No. I know, not the escapes. I know when I picked this up last year and I only actually recently watched it in, in that five-day marathon was um, Elvis. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is another, talking about like Big Trouble, it's like a really, I watched it and I kind of, I think I said in the video, it doesn't feel like a John Carpenter movie, but mm-hmm. Kurt Russell is fantastic as Elvis in this. It's really awesome. It's I believe it was like, it's a good, it's 170 minutes. So it's kind of like, I think it was originally a TV, yeah, kind of a, a part one, part two, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, you know what I would say about this, Barry, is there's like there's early on scenes where there's you know Elvis is a kid, which is obviously not Kurt Russell, but um, he's like out in the woods playing, and there's this like you were talking, we were talking beforehand here about like you know uh, horror movies with like ominous rushing and wind and trees mm-hmm. kind of swaying. All this is kind of happening in the scene in Elvis, and there is no like uh, is it like Foley they call or ADR the sound effects? There's right. like it's just silent, and I kind of feel like geez the budget must have ran out or something because it's like <laughs> absolutely silent scene and then you know elvis kind of bursts back into his house but yeah like i think a review i saw this was like court russell is better as elvis than elvis was as himself but yeah yeah really really awesome but another one of those kind of you know it isn't an obvious kind of carpenter movie but um yeah i just thought that that was you know court russell connection there and um, yeah and as you said we've the two the two escapes and the thing as well so we've a we've a nice kind of choice there for Kurt Russell stuff's really awesome. Oh, definitely, yeah, definitely. Obviously, the th- I'll I'll pull out the thing because I think the thing's worth talking about. I've got yeah, I've got this on Blu-ray like eight times, all different. Oh my god! But I've got a, a VHS style Blu-ray. Yeah, uh, I've got the Scream Factory one. I've got the Arrow video, the limited edition. I've also got the standard edition. I've got yeah. I think was it Studio Canal or something that brought out a single version, a single version. Just so mm. many. I don't know why, but. I think it's because the artwork for the thing is so iconic. No matter oh, yeah. what version you get, you're like, well, I need to get that. It doesn't matter if I've got it eight times, I'm getting that again. Um, yeah, absolutely. I remember you kind of said in one of your recent videos, uh, you were talking about memories of like the video store and yeah. kind of going at the weekends to rent for the weekend. And yeah, it was, I, you know, that iconic kind of person and the, the beam of light coming out. Yeah, that, that's a that's a video cover. I definitely remember oh, kind yeah, of looking definitely. at it as a kid going like, what is that? like?" Yeah. Uh, going back to that Elvis one, I've never yeah. seen that Elvis. And mm. I do want to see it because I do think even... Uh, even before I knew he played Elvis in that movie, I said to myself that Kurt Russell would have been a good Elvis. I think it's because of the hair and the, the sideburns yeah. that he has in all of his films. I thought he'd play a good Elvis, and then I found that he did. And then I also found out that John Carpenter directed it as well, and I'm just like, I, yeah. need, I need to see it. So I'll, that's yeah, on my double watch reason. List. I'll need to watch yeah, it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure if it's... Sorry, I've thrown it off to the side here. Uh, this is like a Region A, so I had to import this from the States. I'm not 100% if it's out over our neck of the woods, but... um. Yeah, multi region player, so I can get away with yeah. those kind of things. So well, I've got uh, this is this is a cheap option, guys. I think I've said this before to people, yeah. but this is a cheap option. What you could do is see if you buy a Blu-ray rewriter. They must yes. cost about yeah. fifty pounds. Just lock it to region one. Oh, sorry, region A, uh, which is what I done. So what I do is I okay. put region A's in my Blu-ray, Blu-ray rewriter into my hmm. laptop, and then from my laptop I put HDMI cable into my TV. It's nice. a longer process, but it's fifty pounds easy. Yeah, same result. Yeah, exactly. And it's still HDMI, yeah. so it's fully HD and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, Jeez, um, yeah. Nice hack. Never would have thought of that. And I have a Blu-ray uh, drive, so I have to <laughs> have to see about that. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> nice. the, I I've got a funny feeling, Rob, that you've probably got more John Carpenter movies than me. Um, <laughs> I think what we'll do is we'll will we skip past Halloween. Yeah, I pulled. Uh, I know you have the steel book as well. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it, it's right. It's right up there for both of us. I mean, it, yeah, I know you love Halloween, the franchise as well, and so do I. Um, it all goes downhill after this one, folks. It's, you're <laughs> never gonna beat this one. Yeah, <laughs> That's as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I've actually got the. I've got the 35th anniversary steel book as well. You know, the one with the, oh, the yeah. pumpkin. It's back there. It's, yes. Again, it's just another version of the movie. Um, yeah. And I think most of what's on the 40th anniversary is what was on the. 35th anniversary as well not too sure as well yeah um, you sure? I, I don't want to jump off topic but, uh, real quick i have something <laughs> you can to. 
to kind of show you we're talking about halloween steelbooks here so these i found out about these through another irish youtuber he collects kind of really cool busts and you know those kind of special edition ones and mm-hmm. um, so the, but their dvd i didn't really realize that until they arrived yesterday in the post but their steelbooks um i, I can't remember where the company is from nsm records but oh yeah they do have you seen these ones with the kind of it's probably not going to work on camera but the lenticular yeah, yeah i can see it yeah cover. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. He was kind of saying these are kind of hard to get. So I was able to get Halloween three, and Halloween four, and Halloween yeah. five. <laughs> yeah. So there's um they weren't too expensive, about thirty quid each. Um, as I said, DVD. Uh, I probably might stick a Blu-ray disc into there. Just wanted the steel book. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, uh, no, they're, they are nice. With the cases, yeah, really nice. And he was he actually kind of done a video saying he had shown three, four, and five before, and then he kind of randomly came across two Halloween two, so he kind of grabbed that one. So now you know, collector problems, Barry. I'm yeah, on the hunt for I'm on the I'm hunt really for two. Sure. So uh, I don't oh. don't don't quote me on this, but I believe yeah. they are possibly Austrian. Yes, it's awesome. it's something like that. Like yeah, Austria and Switzerland are somewhere kind of over there. Yeah, yeah, is that, <laughs> over there on the map. <laughs> yeah, because I used to I used to buy a few of those NSM yeah. steelbooks before, and yeah. uh, I thought they were German because I always got them from Amazon Germany. Um, and yes. then somebody said to me that's an Austrian release, and then I searched an Austrian website one time, and a lot of them came up. So I thought, oh, it must be Austrian. If it's not, it's yeah. going to be German. But it's either German or Austrian. I think they're yeah. quite similar with their. The artwork and the you know the the, the logo the sticker you get the ratings logos yes. the squares yeah uh, yeah so that's it things. yeah so sorry to jump off no, no, <laughs> off carpenter okay. there but Halloween um, steelbooks that was that was the quick section there <laughs> well this this is probably your area of expertise and this is probably where you're going to um, embarrass me here right but I've got the okay. the 4K releases of the these ones right yes uh, but you I think you've got the the major box sets don't you. Yes, two seconds. <laughs> now I'm, I'm. We're kind of lucky enough over here, Barry, um, that we have still two Terror Records shops over here, mm-hmm. and I always have to shout out my friend Ray works in Terror Records. So, um, I got the text. Uh, Jesus, what was it like two, three years ago when these came out? Yeah, about 20, that. 2018. Yeah, three years ago, um, and it was like Carpenter 4K Collector's Edition, um. It was everything except Prince of Darkness. I don't know why that was delayed, but you'd like they're put aside, you can collect them, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so yeah, they're like as you were showing the thing, they're kind of like this kind of chunky box. Um, yeah. So it's like in these ones, you get the 4K of the movie, the Blu-ray of the movie, a Blu-ray bonus disc, the soundtrack, posters, postcards, a book, all in this. So uh, there's Day Live, mm-hmm. uh, Escape from New York. And the fog. So I got the three of those together. And for some reason, Prince of Darkness didn't come in. Uh, this was right before Christmas. So I got the regular Prince of Darkness like you right. have. And then I got the text, Prince of Darkness is here. And it's put aside for you. Yeah. So yeah, they're absolutely fantastic. Um, and I, I think I kind of said in a video on my channel before, I bought these before I even had a Blu-ray or a 4K player or TV. Mm-hmm. So I didn't even, I haven't even watched all these in 4K yet. I'm still trying to make my way through them. But right. um they do look fantastic in 4k um you know I, you know yourself there's only so many 4k reviews i can do on the channel where i'm like 4k looks way better than blu-ray yeah. i don't know and what it else does. i can say to convince people mm-hmm. yeah it's yeah it, it does and it's fantastic i think my problem was i can't remember what one was it came out first it may have been the fog or the thing uh, the i think it may have been the fog sorry um mm. and it, it was put up on amazon and i thought oh, I'll, I'll buy that later on i don't need to buy it just now and then yeah. it sold out <laughs> excuse me <sighs> But then I thought, okay, it'll come back in again, but it didn't. Then people started selling it for a hundred pounds. I'm like, yeah. what? And then I just I thought I'm not going to buy that. And then I saw the other ones were coming out as well. And I said to myself, I can't buy them if I don't have the the other one. It just wouldn't yeah. look right. But I'm <laughs> I'm glad they brought these out. They're not as as good, but they still yeah. come in a nice slipcover and stuff. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. And again, they look amazing. I think the fog is the only mm. one I've seen in 4K, um, yeah. and it just looks fantastic. It looks old. But it looks yeah. clean. If you know, it's yeah, the way it's supposed to it should have looked yeah. brand new going into cinema. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's where you come in, Rob, because I think you're more of a you know your formats and you know how things should look with your job. Um, yeah. But to me, see if I showed this to my wife on 4K and showed her uh, a DVD, she's she would say, "Oh, I, I don't know the difference." And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. "What?" Uh, I I can tell the difference, and I'm sure you can as well. But it's these. Yeah. Uh, so I've, again, I've only seen the, that one, but they're really, yeah. really nice. 
really nice release. Yeah, it's it's funny you say that, talking about the differences. I think the the last one of those I done a, like an actual separate review video on the channel. I think was Prince of Darkness, and you know what? I don't know if you're noticing as well, Barry, but um. Um, when I'm doing these 4K reviews or looking at them, I'm kind of sticking in the Blu-ray disc. And I'm trying to like pause on the same scene or, you know, getting the time code off the front of the player. And and what I started doing in the review videos was I'm actually taking a still photo with the, with the DSLR camera. You you know about all that stuff as well. And what I'm actually kind of seeing is the 4K look. Obviously, there's a bigger color range and HDR and all that sort of stuff. But the Blu-rays just look like they have this kind of whitewash. Like everything is just brighter and like whitewashed i can't even come up with a better i just keep saying whitewashed in all the videos but <laughs> it's just 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 something about it but that's not to say if you didn't see the 4k and you just had the blu-ray that you wouldn't think the blu-ray is fine it's i yeah. think it's not until you see the 4k that you can really kind of see the difference but um it's crazy times as well you know obviously as you said sorry, you know in case there's people watching um I, i've worked as a projectionist for like you know, since 2002 and working with film but i also we have a small dvd shop in the cinema i work in so i work in there as well um, and it's crazy to think um, i don't know if you see any of these kind of stats barry but like dvd is still like 80 percent of the market or yeah. whatever and like blu-ray is like 12 and like 4k is right at the end it's like it's really kind of mind-blowing the number of people that come into the shop and you're kind of like they'll pick up a 4k and be like wait what's 4k this will work on my dvd player right and it's like geez, <laughs> still on dvd like and there's no convincing them like they think dvd is is just good as it's gonna get like it's yeah it's, it's absolutely crazy it is bizarre i mean i've got family members when you go into the house they've got a dvd shelf for 50 dvds yep. or whatever you know nothing like ours but i'm like you not got a blu-ray player and they're like what's blu-ray i'm like what yeah. <laughs> it, to us that's strange but to yeah. someone who doesn't care about film or doesn't care about physical media they watch netflix and i watch netflix and mm -hmm. i pay for netflix and it's bizarre yeah. because i'll i'll watch a movie on netflix and if I like it, I'll buy the Blu-ray. Even yeah. though I can watch it's it nice for free. You know, it's, it's yeah. having that physical media. And it goes back to the video store memories, which I won't get too much into because I spoke about that in yeah, separate. the video that you will see. But it's yeah. having that nostalgic love for looking at something it yeah. adds to the layer of how much you love a specific movie. Um, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, just seeing like your background as well, it just reminds me of being in yeah. a video store. In fact, your background actually looks like um, FOP. We've got a FOP. I don't know if you know what FOP is. It's like HMV. Right. It's like FOP's like the sister company of HMV. Uh, yeah. And that's how they set their Blu-rays out. It's similar to that in some of their shelves. Nice. And it looks really nice. And it just takes you back to going into the store and just yeah. pulling things out and looking at it. You know, I've, I've often, you, I'm sure you're the same as well, because we can see all their stuff behind it as well. But I sometimes, you know, I'll sit down at night and be like, well, I think I'll stick a film on. And like half an hour later, you're, I'm just... I'm sitting like, and what you guys can see is like, so this is um, after here, there's another shelf up here and then it's the ceiling, but I have a full like shelf going right around the room up to the ceiling. That's all the DVDs. So this is just Blu-ray and 4K. But I often just kind of sit here and you're just kind of staring around the room like, what do I put on? And then it's like, uh, YouTube. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just, there's too many choices. That's, you know, collector problems again. It's like <laughs> spoiled well, for choice. I don't know about you, but sometimes I would spend a night and say to myself, right, I'm going to, I'm going to watch a film and I'll look at my movies, not just the ones, but I've got some in front of me and I've got some under there and, and boxes. But when I had my movies out, I would spend maybe an hour or so just looking at them and just, you know, I remember that film and looking at the back of it. Mm -hmm. See, once it's done, it's the end of the night. And I'm like, I, I'm not going to watch anything now because it's too late. But I still had a yeah. good time. I still had a good time looking <laughs> yeah. at old covers. Looking at the covers. That, that's me. Yeah. That's a movie watching experience for me right there. Looking at film yeah. covers. Some it's, of the best. It's crazy. Yeah. There, there's some of the artwork is, is not what it used to be at all, is it? Like it's yeah. uh, some of it is, is terrible. But um, speaking of cool artwork, I'll, I'll, I'll try and bring us back to Carpenter. Um, again, this, this was another one. I, I don't know about you, Barry. I, I like only saw this like like literally a couple of weeks ago again it was in the, the five day court russell thing escape from la i right. thought this is a really cool kind of slip cover on this one i mean it, the cover inside is still the same it's nothing different but i never saw escape from la a couple of weeks ago yeah i've never um, seen that escape, one either yeah escape from new york it, i think is is way better it's um i think this i kind of said it in the video i think it kind of suffers a little bit this one from the like what was this like 96 yeah that was like, you know, mid 90s special effects. And it's like, uh, I don't know, but it's, it's funny to see Kurt Russell and Peter Fonda kind of surfing <laughs> down, down the streets of LA. <laughs> like, but um, yeah, it, it was cool to see that character back again. Like, that's another, you know, talk about iconic Kurt Russell characters and Carpenter films. 
Um, yeah, Snake Pruskin is definitely one of them. I'd say. Mm -hmm. I think if they if they left if they didn't make Escape from LA, I think if they made that today, it would have been a lot mm -hmm. better. You know, make yeah. it all these years later, not have that one in the nineties. I think it probably would have been a lot better. I've never seen it. I've seen obviously New York, um, yeah. but I, I've, I just believe that if they didn't make that in the nineties and waited to the right time, it might have been better. But who knows? But speaking of artwork, going on to artwork, yeah. right? Um, that's a really nice artwork. This is what you call no. really bad artwork for a John Carpenter <laughs> movie. Yeah, I have that here. The, <laughs> I don't know who made this poster, and I don't know if it's intentional, but the aspect ratio of the, these faces um, is awful. And I don't know. Yeah. Have you Way seen off. this film, Village of the Damned? I have not, and I'm just kind of like I I don't know do you I don't know if I have the same one as you. I have an import, but mine has reversible, so this is the other side of that reversible artwork. So it seems like this is a better. It's like a drawn kind of you know old school, but then inside I have those weird shaped faces on the reverse of that. Ah, um, right, okay. But this yeah. is yeah, this is a region A. So I've bought this. This is like a Scream Factory. That's so Scream, yeah. Scream Factory. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've never seen it before. See this kid here. Yeah, look out for that kid. Did you recognize that person though? No. Oh my god, it looks who is it? Uh, he looks is near. he plays John Connor in the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, that, um, that was a fantastic series. I have them, they're here behind me somewhere. He's a director now, I can't remember his name is again. It is it well? Tom, Thomas Decker or something? Yes, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's a director yeah. now. I think was he yeah. in a, a Nightmare on Elm Street remake? He could have been, yes, that's. <sighs> That's the one nightmare I'm missing from the right, <laughs> from but, the collection here. <laughs> but yeah, he's in it. So there's a few there's a few familiar faces in that. You've obviously got Christopher Reeve and Kirsty Alley, yeah. Mark Hamill cool. as well. He's in nice. it. Yeah, uh, and it's actually yeah. really decent. You know, for a John. Mm. This is this is what I want to talk about with John Carpenter. Obviously, his best times were past them by the mid nineties. Yes, uh, John Carpenter's in this as well. Um, and this was actually really decent. I thought because it was mid nineties, John Carpenter. I thought it's not going to be good. It's definitely not as good as his eighties work. Um, yeah. But it's actually a surprisingly decent film. So if you've never seen it, I think you might like it. It's actually not too bad. Quite eerie as well, which is quite yeah. Cool. cool. It's on the. I I have a cup. I mean, there's some more here in the pile that I've kind of um. I was able to. I have everything John directed, except, um. The, you'll know Barry the Mass is a horror uh, TV kind of show TV series he directed uh, yeah. one or two episodes I have the I have the Blu-ray of the episodes he done for the first series the second, missing the second series Cigarette Burns yeah which is cool yeah. you know because it kind of has the projection and the cinema kind of thing and Norman yeah. Reedus Walking Dead fans all like that one um, yeah that was really I, I didn't even know what it was till I bought it I do have the Blu-ray of that but he directed like another episode for season two which it, uh, it kind of pops up on like Spanish Amazon, but somebody had said to me like the legalities of stuff in Spain are not the same. Of like right. people just make like DVDRs or whatever and like sell stuff in a yeah, box. Yeah. Like this is this is official. So I do I have everything like officially that I can get my hands on that he's directed. But um, talking about nineties Carpenter, one one I really like. Uh, I don't know what you think about this one, Barry, but is uh, Vampires. <laughs> I really, really like this one. I don't know why. I kind of, I wouldn't say I'm like any sort of huge fan of James Woods. I don't even know that I have any other movie that James Woods is in, in the collection. Um, I absolutely fell in love with Cheryl Lee when I saw this and then realized she was in Twin Peaks. Like when this came out in the late, was this 98 or something, wasn't it? 98, um, yeah. 98, yeah. And then I kind of, that's how I kind of got into Twin Peaks. But um, yeah, I, I, I kind of like vampires. Well, I think you know, my problem with vampires is I think I would have liked it more if I didn't mm. watch it on the same week that I first saw From Dust Till Dawn. Oh, um, well, yeah. No, I watched From Dust Till Dawn and I was blown away by that. I, you know, as I, I think I was like 14 years old at the time when I watched it. Mm. And I thought it was a, a, like a your, your, like true romance or something like that. So I was watching it yeah. and then all of a sudden it's this vampire film vampires, yeah. and I thought wow this is excellent and then I saw a trailer for vampires and I thought that's just like a kind of western action movie like from Dust Till Dawn yeah. so I watched vampires and I thought <laughs> I mean I, I'm not a massive fan of James Woods either but I think James Woods was maybe the saving grace for yeah. vampires um, yeah. 
I've, I've literally seen it twice. I watched it the first time when I first saw it on video and I seen it on TV like 10 years later, but I've not seen it since. And I don't have fond memories of it other than yeah. it was nowhere near as good as From Dust Till Dawn. And that was yeah, it. that's a that's a tough one to go up against. And isn't like one of the isn't there randomly like a Baldwin or some one of the like twelve Baldwins or something? Yeah, yeah, one of the Baldwins. Well. Is it Daniel Baldwin yeah. or um, what? Well, it's Daniel or William? I bet you it's Stephen. <laughs> it's Daniel. Yeah, it's Daniel. <laughs> Daniel. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was Daniel. <laughs> yeah, go. Cool. I I have. Um, I'm kind of looking at the at the pile here. It's kind of getting smaller. Um, I would, you know, actually, I think I said this in a reason. Uh, yeah, sorry, I keep saying I said this in a recent video on my channel. Um, I don't see an awful. I don't know if you kind of encountered the same thing, Barry, but I don't see an awful lot of people talking about this Carpenter one. And I, I thought the 4K this was brilliant. It looked great. Is Christine really, really great looking 4K? Um, I, nobody really talks about it much. Yeah, see, I'm missing that one. And I, I kind of want that cover. So <laughs> then the Kita cover, yeah. Oh God! But yeah, the the four K on this was brilliant, especially the scene where the car kind of you know it's after being crumpled and it kind of comes back. Uh, I think they kind of I think they say in the making of they shot it in reverse. But no, yeah. I don't really see a lot of people mention Christine. So mm -hmm. yeah, here, here there it is for some people. Four K looks great. Grab yourself a copy of this one. Twenty fifth anniversary. This one is. Yeah, I mean, I've, this one. The only reason I haven't opened this is because mm -hmm. it was the Indicator's first ever release. Oh well, yeah, number one, number yeah. one, and it's uh, they did re-release this with the the basic cover, um, yeah, you know, the basic Blu-ray cover. But I thought I'd keep this sealed. I've I've actually obviously seen it loads of times. Uh, but yeah, mm. I think that's a really underrated Carpenter movie, and I think something that helps this one was the score, and this one as well, because yeah. it was nineteen eighty three. I think it was. Um, yes. Yeah. It still had that classic John Carpenter style, the the you know the theme tunes, um. Who done the? No, it wasn't. It wasn't Dean Cundy. I don't think it done the cinema talk. No, it wasn't. Um, no, but it was still that kind of style of Carpenter yeah. movie at the time, and obviously it was a Stephen King novel. Um, yeah, cool. So, you know, having Carpenter and King together to make a, a movie like that, it was pretty rare at the time. Yeah. Uh, Unbelievable. Yeah, it was yeah. really good. They worked it really well. There's two speaking of Carpenter soundtracks. I should have brought in. I have a lot of the um I collect the vinyl, the vinyl stuff as well. So I have a lot of Carpenter vinyl stuff. But um talking of soundtracks, I have there's two early ones here in his kind of filmography. Um um Assault on Precinct 13. Now this is a this is an import, but that's a oh, man, the team tune of that. I love the team tune <laughs> of this one. Um I didn't think put you the remake. I don't like don't remake Carpenter but another one uh, you were kind of saying about like you know he had that core kind of group of people he worked with earlier like Dean Cundy so another one that I kind of I thought was good but is not his music is someone's watching me um yeah because I guess I don't know what the reason was maybe they didn't let him do the music music composed by Harry Suckman um it definitely did suck Harry <laughs> it, wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't as good as uh it, it's just kind of weird to watch one of his things and it's you kind of to know it's not him doing mm -hmm. the music I, I don't know how to kind of explain that but um, yeah no, no I, know, yeah, I know what you mean yeah that there are two kind of uh early on movies and I'm kind of um I'm left with a a pile of I, I don't know I I'll, I'll throw Dark Star up here I, I don't know how you feel about this one Barry I I watched it it's like it is what it is. It's kind of I'm hard not, to kind I'm of think. I've not seen it in a long time. I've watched it as a kid. Yeah, it's I, it's kind of interesting. Um, there is a great um, who is the crowd? Ballyhoo Films. Um, I think is the is the company. They, there's like a there's like a two hour making of kind of behind the story, which something was really cool was on in that behind the story is. Uh, did you know? Um, wasn't it like UCLA? Was that the school Carpenter and all those guys went to? or usc or something like that the, the film school the famous film school um they they done a student film and this was pre-dark star and it won an oscar so technically john carpenter is an oscar winner i had no <laughs> he idea was, he was it's mentioned in the documentary yeah i, I never like I, again i watched dark star like fully for the i'd seen bits and pieces like mm -hmm. so i watched it for the first time like earlier this year and yeah um, yeah that was kind of the one, <laughs> one kind of interesting thing uh in that documentary but i'll throw uh of two more left in the pile. i'll just throw them here to get them out of the way i haven't seen this one yet um a lot of people had said it's brilliant it kind of i don't know um i don't know uh starman i've never seen it so yeah. i'm not too sure have you any no i've never seen that one either 
you know i've heard i've shown it in some videos and people are like wow it's it's so you're, you're going to be mind blown this is it's mm-hmm. unbelievable um the last one i don't i, I kind of get the feeling maybe you're not a fan of this one i again this was the only carpenter movie i ran on 35 mil so it kind of has a special it's kind of like you know as bad as halloween resurrection is um it's one of the three halloweens i ran on 35 mil so it kind of yeah, has a bit of a place for me but the ward <laughs> i remember really liking this at the time i you know i made up the print and i got to view it without an audience you know make sure everything was okay um I do like Amber Heard. I know a lot of people don't like her. Um, I I remember liking it at the time, but I'm kind of like, I'm kind of on the fence about rewatching it because I think it might, thoughts might change. Yeah. Uh, do you know upon what? I'm, rewatching that one. I'm the same. Like when I first mm. seen the film, I um I liked it. I thought it was really good. Yeah. Uh, it came out in 2011. Is that right? Mm. Yeah, ten or eleven somewhere around there. Um, and when I watched that, I was like, that's, that's actually quite decent because I knew that Carpenter was rusty at the time. And I did, mm. I liked Amber Heard at the time. And also Lindsay Fonseca, she was in Kick yes. Ass and in The Ward. Mm. Um, so I liked those two. And so I had some familiar faces as well. And I thought it was quite a creepy story. It mm. got a lot of hate when it came out. I don't think it deserves the hate that it does, but obviously it doesn't deserve to be on the same label yeah. as films that he's made before. But he said it himself, like he's not a director anymore. Um, yeah. He doesn't doesn't enjoy it anymore. Doesn't care about directing anymore. So, and you can tell in his direction of the war that looked like a kind of half-hearted project for him. Yeah. Um, but mm. I, I thought it was decent. Um, oh, I yeah. want to go back to mm. yeah. Um, s- someone's watching me. Right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a fun fact. When I say fact, it's not confirmed as a fact, right? But originally, yeah. John Carpenter wanted to make a Halloween movie in a high-rise building. And he yes. said, no. And he said, right, okay. He wrote a sequel. Apparently, wrote a sequel to Halloween in a high-rise building. And they said, mm. we're not doing that. So he said, I'm just going to make my own high-rise movie. Yeah. And it was someone That's what watching. turned into Well, wow. mm-hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah, there's... um, I don't... I don't... Uh, no, I don't have them. Um, there isn't there like two different books, like volume one and two, of like unfilmed Halloween scripts. Oh, yeah, I can't like recall the exact name of the book. Shape, but... I think it's called. So, um, yeah, yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah, I, I haven't picked them up, but it's a kind of um, wasn't there like a Tarantino Halloween script? I know we're completely going Halloween, Halloween sex. Now, wasn't there? Uh, yeah, yeah. So like. I, I need to get a hold of those books. It kind of sounds interesting. I think there is a YouTube channel where two guys kind of discuss each of the scripts in, in videos, but um, oh, yeah. I'd like to get a hold of that book and kind of, yeah, that'd be Michael Let Loose in the Block of Flats. Yeah, no, it would, <laughs> would be interesting. I don't know if that kind of Taking Shape, well, the two Taking Shape books, if that's the one you're talking about, I don't yeah. know how accurate they are. I don't know if it's books that are right. made by fans. I'm not too yeah. sure. Uh, and people just putting things together from what they've read online. Um, yeah, but it's interesting either way because it's some of the stories that you read about whether they're true or false. Um, yeah, you're like, wow, that's that would be really good if that happened. It sounds interesting. Yeah, there's yeah. one, um, I forgot to pull uh, and I just kind of wanted to give it a mention. It's over here. Where is it? There it is. Um, 90s, yeah. So I think, isn't there kind of a famous behind the scenes of um, Big Trouble in Little China where is that possibly the start of this where he? John starts getting annoyed with the studios kind of like they were butting in going like why is why is Kurt Russell not the lead in this in big trouble and they didn't get it I think that's maybe the where he kind of goes on the down with the studios I really like this 90 what is this 93 um body bags I oh, yeah. really enjoyed this one. Yeah. <laughs> I had seen bits of it. And um of course you have Toby Hooper directs the tour the tree kind of uh, the anthology things and um John's in there as a weird, like, what is he, like a mortician or a surgeon or something? He's on like the front, in yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah he's, uh, he's on the front there. He does these little kind of skits in between. But, um, yeah, that was, it's kind of, you know, it's fun for what it is. Um, uh, Stacey Keach, isn't that his name, is in the one, he's in one of those and he's in Escape from L.A. then. He's kind yeah, of, uh, Stacey Keach, he's, he's kind he's of funny in, in that. But, um, he's in Prison Break and Road Games. Yeah. Games. yeah road game that was yeah jamie lee there's another always it's <laughs> every time i do like a come on to someone's channel i always kind of connect stuff back to like we're doing um i do with my friend dave we do a star trek uh stream so we watch a star trek movie once a month and we do a live stream and talk about it and every time i'm sitting going you know tom morgan is the stunts and he was michael <laughs> and <laughs> you know and he was jason <laughs> it's like i always kind of connect back to the horror mm-hmm. stuff it's, it's really cool yeah yeah i was, I was gonna say um John Carpenter 
in body bags. I thought he was excellent in body bags. I didn't know how yeah. good he was as an actor until I saw that. I'm like, he's actually really good. Because you get actors, yeah. um, obviously, rest in peace, Wes Craven, but he was terrible mm. in A New Nightmare as Wes yeah. Craven. Um, but when you see... And he's in, he has a, a small piece in body bags as well. He kind of walks up to get petrol or something, doesn't oh, he? Does he? The first one about it? Yeah, he has a really... Yeah, there's a bunch of like kind of guest people uh, in body bags here and there. Yeah, he's. I think he. It's kind of the first one is like a gas station at night or something. You know, the attendant on her own, and I think Wes Craven comes up and he gets petrol or something like that. Yeah, I'll need yeah, to watch that go. again. I watched the. Must have been about five or six years ago. Um, yeah. Was the one is Stacy Keach is the one where his hair's grown. Yeah, he's like a bald guy trying to do a come over. Yeah, and yeah, he, yeah. Yeah, Debbie Harry from Blondie is in there yeah, as yeah. well. And David Warner, yeah. Yeah, so I only remember really bits of it. I remember loving it. I remember thinking it was great, yeah. but I just remember the little small bits of it all. And I, sometimes I get it mixed up with Creepshow 2 for some reason. I don't know why. Um, yeah, Creepshow 2 I've never seen. I have the first one and that's that's great. But yeah, Creep, I know isn't there like a nice Arrow uh, release of Creepshow 2? So, oh. Yeah, well, Creepshow 2 is, is very underrated. There's one called The Raft yeah. that everyone talks about, which is, is really good. Um, yeah. I, won't, I won't spoil anything if you've never seen it, but I think it's <laughs> yeah. underrated. Not as good as Creepshow, but it's very underrated because maybe it's because people think it should be as good as the first one. Um, mm. But it's not. But it's still fun. It's a fun eighties. Uh, as eighties, I'm sure it's nineteen eighty seven. Yeah, late eighties, I think. Yeah, yeah. something like that. But yeah, it's it's a yeah. lot of fun. Really like it. Um, yeah, cool. So yeah, I think that will be us for today on mm. this movie corner. Um, we did kind of stick to John Carpenter as much as we could. I don't think we yeah. we swayed yeah. away from John Carpenter that much. Um, in the back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Um, but you're a big you're a big fan of John Carpenter, so that's understandable. Um, yeah, guys, if you've not seen uh, Rob's channel before, I'm going to leave a link down below to all Rob's information. Um, he does a lot of good 4K stuff and all different kind of physical media, and obviously all genres as well. Um, but if you if you want to see anything about your channel just now, Rob, as well, then by all means, just chat away yeah 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 I, first of all thanks for having me on first guest uh, it's always a pleasure to come on and, and chat stuff with you barry it's really awesome you're the kind of you're my main source for anything halloween and horror anything i need to know i'm coming to your channel to find <laughs> out um yeah i do a little bit of like i do love the horror stuff um i just kind of you know when i was starting my channel i was kind of like there's enough people who cover it way better than I could. So I just kind of, I do a little bit of everything. So I'm um, on the channel and the Patreon and all that sort of stuff kind of is sort of taken off at the moment. So yeah, I do a, um, do a bit of everything. Yeah, reviews and hauls and, you know, everyone loves a good haul. And mm. um, I do a lot of, um, like, you know, working in the cinema. So I I'll have a lot of 35 mil film stuff here. And I've like, I've like about two, 300, like, oh, you would know the quad cinema posters. Like I'm, I'm showing them off. And like, I, I try and do free preview of the Patreon stuff to kind of let people see like what's kind of involved in that. Yeah. But um, I'm doing all that kind of over for the Patreon people at the moment. But yeah, a little bit of everything. And, um, you know, keep going with the videos. Yeah, I think something that helps with your channel as well is the quality of your channel. The the video quality is really good. The camera angles I love. Um, and I'll need to get that information of the mic off you as well because your mic is so clear. Yeah. It's a very clear yeah. mic that you've got. Um, and it just helps the production value of a video. You know, you see someone, you make it someone who's knowledgeable on YouTube, but their videos, you just, you can't really watch because the audio or the video is bad. Or you make yeah. it vice versa. You make it someone who's got a really stunning looking quality video, but they don't know what they're talking about. So it's good to yeah. see a channel like yourselves <laughs> that you've got really good quality and you obviously know what you're doing and you know your content as well, especially with being a projectionist as well. That really helps when you're talking about, you know, picture quality. You know, that's that's where I go to your channel when I'm if I'm buying a Blu-ray or if I if I want to upgrade it to 4K, I'll say that I'll check yep. out Rob's review and if it's worth it, I'll I'll buy it. And I'm a big fan of John Carpenter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Barry. Really appreciate it. No, not a problem. Hey, thanks again. Any anybody if anybody's got any comments, leave a comments down below anyway, guys. And if you're a fan of John Carpenter, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And what is your favorite John Carpenter movie? As always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>